All right, so for the bubble sort, uh, for the bubble sort rather, I'm going to do this analysis a little more loosely, with the goal mainly of figuring out what is the order of this of this complexity. I'm not going to find the exact function that counts all of the um, like all the comparisons and all of the additions and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so instead, we're just going to look at the algorithm and think about um, what order is this going to be. Well. It has to do with how many times you go through loops. You may have noticed um, figuring out the number of times you go through a loop uh, is very important um, for you know and analyzing these uh, these these things. So um, here we have two for loops, and these are nested for loops in this in this bubble sort algorithm. So uh, for the first one, you're going to go from one to n minus one. So this uh, you're going to go through this n minus one n minus one times. So this is going to be uh, through the loop um, n minus 1 times. Now, each time you go through that loop, you're going to go from 1 to n minus i. So um, that's going to mean you start with n minus 1, and then you're going to do n minus 2, and then you're going to do n minus 3, and then you're going to do n minus 4. The number of times you go through the j loop, the j from 1 to n minus i, is actually changing and getting smaller as you go up. So um, this is uh, from 1 to n minus i, where i starts at 1. This is going to be, um, it's going to be n minus 1, then, then n minus 2, then n minus 3, etc., until you get to, uh, and then until you get down to like 1. Okay, so the number of times you're going through this loop is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And every time you go through the loop, you do a comparison, and then you interchange. So let's call that like two operations. You do a comparison and you might interchange. Uh, you might not. So uh, so the so worst case again is is that you would do two operations there. And the interchange itself might might actually be uh, something that takes more than two operations. But let's just count it as one um, one thing for now, okay? Because remember, it doesn't really matter that much. What we're more or concerned about is the order. So here's what's happening. We're going n minus 1 times. Let's say that this is n minus 1. And each of the times you go through, uh, and uh, each of the times you go through, you're going to go through uh, a smaller and smaller number of times. So the first time you go through, uh, the number is going to be n minus 1. Oops. Oh, my pen is dead. That pen is also dead. What's happening? <laughs> Oh wow! All right, so uh, so let me let me draw this a little bit better. Uh, so the first time you go through here, this is going to be n minus one times as well, because the first time you go through j, it's n minus one. The next time you go through, it's actually going to be uh, that's going to be n minus two, and then you're going to go through, and it's going to be n minus three. So you have n minus one, and then n minus two, and then n minus three, and you're going to keep going until you get down to one. So uh, the total number here is going to be like we're adding, we're adding these together, right? n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 plus dot 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 all the way down to plus 1. So what does that look like? Well, if you do n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 plus all the way down to plus n plus, um, plus 1, rather the last one is going to be plus 1, this is a sum this is a sum of the uh, sum of the first n minus one positive integers. So uh, we actually have a formula for that that you may remember from calculus. Oops, I'm sorry, I was just outside of my screen there. Uh, we have a formula for this that you may remember from calculus. This actually sums up to uh, uh, it's going to be n minus one times n minus 1 plus 1 over 2. Uh, the formula you may remember is if you're summing up the first n, it's n times n plus 1 all over 2. Uh, but here, instead of n, it's n minus 1. So we have n minus 1 times that plus 1 all over 2. This actually ends up being n minus 1 times n over 2, which is uh, n squared minus n over 2. So uh, that, uh, we have that going on. That's the number of times we're going to run through our loop, OK? So we have two operations each time we run through the loop. So what have we got? Overall, overall we're going to end up with, um, oops, 
sorry, I'm slightly, there we go, yeah. So overall, we're gonna end up with, uh, we have our uh, like n squared minus n uh, over two, and then that's times two is just n squared minus n. This is the number of operations you do from running through that loop with two operations per, per, per loop. Um, and even if we hadn't done the, the, the times two, it wouldn't matter much that much because that's just a constant multiple. The point of this here is that this is big O of n squared. Okay, it's big theta of n squared, in fact. So, um, so focus on here. The focus here is on the order, and uh, and so this bubble sort is an n squared. Uh, the complexity of the sort is is n squared. It's big O of n squared. So, um, so yeah. So now we have these three uh, these three things. Um, these three algorithms. Uh, the fastest of them is the binary search, which is uh, which is our um, this ended up being big O of log n. Okay, I had that written on the other paper. Uh, so we had the the log n. Uh, then we have the linear search, which is uh, which is big O of n, and then we have bubble sort, which is big O of n squared. So that would be the the slowest of the three.